Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to our first review on the new Old School Podcast. My name is David, a.k.a. Lurk. My name is Jonathan, a.k.a. A$AP Whiskey. A$AP Whiskey. Well, this is our first review, so we decided to kick it off with a newer release, but from an older group. That is right. This is an old school group. I thought it was a very... Fitting. Exactly. Yeah, it's fitting. New, old, school. So this uh, time... Where we're doing a hip hop album, uh, from the De La Soul collection. Yes. Yes, we decided to go with De La Soul's new release, which came out August twenty sixth of two thousand sixteen this year. And it's called the and the anonymous nobody. The anonymous no and right. the anonymous nobody. Yes. So, the whole album uh, was basically funded through a Kickstarter. About eleven thousand people mm-hmm. signed up for it. They gave them a uh, six hundred thousand dollars in cash really yep that's a lot of dough to produce an album you know but the demand is there i suppose i didn't know it was that much and i didn't know that many people but i knew how they got the album yeah. started yeah that's actually a really cool little piece of history for this album i think just because it is crowdsourced and like like you said eleven thousand people gave them six hundred thousand dollars to create this album uh and they created it by themselves, you know, with no one's input as far as like a upper I mean, hand record label or yeah, no majors were involved. They had some friends uh, come on the album, kind of like all creative input to the group. Right. Yeah, and I, you know, even reading up on it a little bit, uh, you kind of get the vibe whenever you're listening to it. And they just jammed out and uh, they tweaked it, and uh, the finishing product is different than a lot of their other. Music. Yeah, it is, it is. I will say that it is a very unique album for sure. Not just for De La Soul, but for I guess hip hop albums of this time frame. Well, you know, even if it's not a hip hop album, it really has its own place. You know, that's I think the best part about music is just kind of make your own uh, statement. It doesn't matter if it's going against the traditional uh, boom bap or the head nod or even the the trap music that's Mm -hmm. really going on right now those are all hip-hop references yes (laughs) the boom bap yeah i know what you're talking about yeah for those who don't know that's yeah okay now what did you think about the the album well um like i like i said the cool part about the album would be that it is crowdsourced and that they did they what when it came out they also like beat out what artist when the record came out oh it was a a lot of me because they were number one yeah. they they beat out whoever they were number one for that week and, and whatnot uh but again that's because everyone that crowdsourced it got yeah, a copy I'm... of the album so like it kind of is a smart move obviously because that's eleven thousand copies right there right yeah so in a week that's a lot these days <clears throat> now as far as the album goes um I don't know. I guess I was like not really impressed with the album. And I'm not like a giant De La Soul fan. Like there there'll be albums that'll come out that I don't hear of them. So I don't I don't get to hear their progression over the years, but I've messed with them since the eighties, so I know who they are and I've kind of picked up an album here or there. But uh to me, with them having all creative input, I think they made an album that they wanted to make, which you can definitely tell. And it's more like a riding around, like what did I write down? Riding around with your windows down and sunset setting. It's the chill. It's a lot of chill vibes. The beats are very chill, very like calm. There's nothing like they're they're. It's a lyricist album, obviously, because they're all lyricists. Right. So. Uh, the beats don't stand out to me, and I kind of neglect that. I hate that. You know, maybe because you're more accustomed to other music sometimes. Uh, I, I like the album overall. Uh, the feel of it uh, reminded me of... I, I really like The Roots. Mm. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've seen them, them a few times. Uh, I've seen DLR once They uh, when I was at Riot Fest, mm-hmm. and they control a crowd man well i mean like and again the, this album's not like their other albums right. like, i i would think because you know, the, the last one i really listened to was uh the grind date 
which was 2004. Do you get the idea? Do you get the effect that it's like made for older, older people though? This album, this particular album, no, kind of has like know, an man. older sound to it. You know what I mean? The samples in the background and stuff like that. It's just all. When I say mellow and calm, it's not like a horrible thing. It's just it. This album is not made for me. You know what I mean? Right. I don't think it's more mellow and calm. I think um, they just want a different direction with it. Oh yeah. Well, you they know? had all control over it. So I mean, obviously it's. Something they all wanted. That's how they wanted that album to yeah. sound like and everything. So, yeah, kudos to that. But, like I said, it's just not made <coughs> for me particularly. Well, I mean, okay, so they had 17 tracks on it. Um, a majority of it, you kind of just... If you if you like slow flow, mm-hmm. which they've normally been pretty good at, um, besides, you know, that record, uh, their most popular... Or their 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 first <laughs> single, I guess you would say. Yeah. Me, myself, and I. Um. Everything is just. Well, yeah, but that's also like very popish because they had yeah. record label help, and yeah. you know that's why, you know, even that's uh, the song they did with Redman back in the early two thousands. Ooh, that's you know mainstream feel to it. But I really like I, I like that album and I like that song. <laughs> me too. But you know it is what it is, and uh, there are a couple decent tracks on here that I that I that I like. Well, which which ones stand out to you then? The first one that stood out on the entire album to me was number four. Um, Property of Spit Kicker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Property of Spit Kicker. Um, I really liked that beat. That's a slow chill beat too. You know what I mean? That's kind of like a hitting the blunt, cruising with your car, and just you know vibe. Oh yeah, and then you just go back to back to back. Yeah, rhyming. Uh, I really like that. Uh, once they get into the middle of the album, uh, the CBGBS track. Is that, is that uh, like an ode to CBGBs or something? Right? Yeah, I think it is. CBGBs. Because okay. they have like that skit, right? The yes. mic guy? Yeah, okay. And the whole peanut with a cashew. Peanut with a cashew. But but even there, uh, that bleeds into um, the next track. And like I said, it just reminds me of uh, that they go over some guitars. Yeah, that's one of their and, longer tracks on the album yeah. too. And I, I like the vibe of that a lot. That's an, that's the other song that I was going to yeah. pick. Yeah, if I had two to pick from. Lord Intending. Um, that, that's that's what it's called. Lord Intended. Um, yeah, that song stood out to me obviously because it's actual instruments and stuff like that, which you know they do sample other kind of like samples that have real instruments in there. So, but um, it just felt like a live show, and it's also like a rock kind of vibe to it. Yeah, I would be really interested to see how they play this one live as well. Um, <laughs> yeah, like I said, basically. The time I saw him before, they, um, Maceo was on the, on the tables and just rocking it. So what's your I'm other, rocking it. what's the other track? Uh, yeah, I really like. Cause my two tracks were going to be, I'll just say my two tracks are, what is it? Uh, Power to Spit Kicker, which is the fourth track. Yeah. You have the Lord Willing, which is. The Lord Intended. Lord Intended, sorry, which is. No, number seven. Number seven. So the other track that you like. I really like uh, number five, Memory of Us. Uh, I had Pete Rock and okay, uh, yeah, still mm-hmm. on it. Uh, there's a song that sticks out that kind of sounds like there's the David Bowie kind of character on it. The Stoop, Stoopy Kids or Stoopies? Snoopies. Snoopies, is that what it's called? Yes. Yeah. Well, I didn't really like that song. It's just that guy stood out so much on the album to me. I even like the uh, the track with chains, two chains on it. Yeah. But the beat was uh, some of that traditional hip-hop. You know, so yeah, the the album goes in and out of uh, they're old and they're new, but they had some decent like features on there. They had Estelle on there, they had Snoop Dogg on there, like you just said, Pete Rock, Two Chains. Who else was on there? Oh, you had Rock Marciano, which is uh, on the the album The Drag You Like, Mm -hmm. Uh, Jill Scott. A few people I've heard of. Is Jill on the album or is she just in the? intro interlude thing the intro interlude oh she's he doesn't like sing anywhere else on the album okay couldn't remember for sure or not either way though what would you overall what was your overall feeling and thoughts and if you would give it five stars max zero stars crap all right we're gonna do uh we'll <laughs> do the five stars the five star <laughs> review here yeah yeah okay well all right so for them to come back and do an album like this, uh, it makes me happy. I think more artists need to do music that they really enjoy doing instead of making albums for 
uh, others, you know. Uh, with that being said, I think there were, the album is a solid three and a half. Three and a half? Yeah. Okay. Because I, I, I am a, I, it's not as lyrical as some of their other music, um, but it has a vibe. It does have some lyrics. Uh, and it's, it's day live, man. Yeah, I, I hear you. Feel good. Um, I was glad that we decided to have this album as you know one of the albums that we decided to review. Like I said, I was let down that it was something that I just couldn't get into as much. It's nothing to do with what they made. I think again, what they did was awesome. The whole crowdfunding and the crowdsource thing, and you know, they made an album that they wanted to make, and I think that's very important as well. Um, the only thing is it's just not made for me and that's okay. That's okay. It's a, still a great album. I'm sure a lot of people are going to love it. Those, fe- I mean, they got like a lot of decent features on there. Some of those songs are actually good. And I'm sure the more I listen to it, the more I could probably grow on me. Um, Cause we only had this week really to, to listen to it. So yep. uh, I will give it maybe like a 2.53. I don't want to be too hurtful on it. Cause I, again, it's not that I, hate the albums is not made for me and i can't get into it that uh, that much but so that being said that's that's that de la souls and the anonymous nobody yeah i'll check it out it's online guys uh, you can stream it all your music spotify options. apple music you can yes. buy it uh tell us what you guys thought of the review what are your thing what are your thoughts on what it should be out of a five-star system comment below uh tweet us and let us know what you think 